before I start work today, I just want to say that um, my mother-in-law, Kathleen Carroll, uh, died yesterday. I just wanted to acknowledge uh, that I was a very lucky man to have such a wonderful mother-in-law and father-in-law, Brendan. And of course, I'm also very, very lucky to have a wonderful wife in Rosie um, who looks after me and puts up with me and is who she is mainly because of her mother and father who she loved dearly and obviously she's in a lot of pain and sorrow today and yesterday and leading up to as well um, made all the more frustrating because of COVID and she can't get home for the funeral or she couldn't get home to be there for her mother's last weeks anyway for and in celebration of the life of a wonderful woman Kathleen Carroll and condolences to Brendan and all the Carrolls around the world most of whom are in Ireland right now except poor old Rosie my heartfelt condolences and good luck to everybody over there and good luck to my wife Rosie my love and condolences to you all now before I break into tears Rosie's in bed having some ketchup I uh, am going to make something for her not because of the circumstances but well because of the circumstances she went to Bunnings today to um, keep herself busy I suppose and she bought some new tools so I'm going to make a special box to put these tools into so she can get them all together and uh, in good condition so the base I'm going to use is this black coated plywood it's nice and strong it's structural apparently or maybe that's just because I cut the word non off the side but structural enough for this job at least as far as the base goes that's about as perfect as you can get for width I've got enough for the length to fit everything comfortably it doesn't need to be terribly deep probably that's the deepest it needs to be there's no batteries with this um, because I've got four she'll just come and take my batteries when she needs them and that'll work out nicely I think off a neighbor's TV cabinet. I'm not sure there's enough in it though. Oh sadly now. Bing bing! Insert light bulb here. If I put the sides on the outside it's 250. But if I put the sides inside the box it's 230. So a double 230 makes 460, which I just have enough to do two sides. Problem solved. except for the oil bottle and I want that standing up and there's plenty of space around it, everything and I guess it can also leave room for expansion if she gets any more tools which is kind of likely I might set it up with the brackets and stuff for these things 
so that its natural way of standing is in the vertical that way. Which then brings the question of this bottle would actually be naturally standing in that direction. In which case this box is actually about 40 mils deeper than it needs to be. had another thought seeing as how there is some spare room in this box I might put the actual chainsaw in there as well it's another Rosito battery powered thing but I might have room to put that in there as well I have had a productive afternoon in the shed but I didn't film any of it. Sorry. I just wanted to get on with the job. So here's what I'm up to. Uh, all these are hedge trimming or log cutting stuff. So we've got a chainsaw there. We've got a bar extender thing there. That's a mini chainsaw for the bar extender. That's a hedge trimmer for the bar extender. That's the handle for the bar extender. So they're all standing in there and they're all locked in in their own little way. The two chainsaws are both locked in by this same little flippy thing. So I can take that out easy. Put it back in, it's got a hole for the shaft to go into and the backboard is shaped for the item so it just get the shaft into that hole it stands there okay but then the flippy down locks it right in the chainsaw lifts out past that just fits into this cedar block which is an offcut from a porch I built in Canberra about probably 15 years ago. So the chainsaw handle goes into the cedar block. And it's uh, got a little notch in there. And then the flippy thing comes down and locks it in. The handle is just sitting by gravity in a hole which is just the right size to fit the neck into so therefore it doesn't really need any locking in the bar extender sits in a little hole there so it can't come forward and up here it's got another little flippy thing that allows it to be lifted straight out so you put the base into the hole and then the flippy thing goes over the pole and it's locked in. The hedge trimmer goes through a hole behind the small chainsaw there. It's uh, blocked underneath so it can't go down more than just about an inch. And then up top it's got a flippy thing that allows it to come out. There's room there for two bottles of bar oil. Also the instruction books and warranty for all those machines. I'll make a little pocket in there for them to go into. The bar oil sits in there nice and easy. I'm just about to put French cleat on the back of it so I can hang it on my wall. 
It was going to go under the house where Rosie has her tools, but she said, and now I agree, that this box and all those tools are too nice to be hidden away under the house. So I've made room for them over there. I'm also going to put wheels on the bottom at the back corners and a handle on top because the whole reason we have all these tools is for the big hedge out the back. So I'll just take it down, handle, wheels, walk it out to the back garden. So uh, that looks pretty impressive actually. I'm glad, I, I'm glad Rosie thought to put it in here instead of under the house. 